Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Now, there is no loss that is more gut-wrenching than the loss of a child. It is a parent's worst nightmare. My guest this morning, Joy Stahl, she knows firsthand the pain, the grief, the emotions that you will go through. Now, Joyce's daughter, Jennifer, was actually murdered in 2001. She's talked before on the show with us about Jennifer's death. She was one of the victims of the Carnegie Deli murders in Manhattan. Joyce is going to talk with us this morning about how she was able to cope and is still coping with Jennifer's death. Joyce, thank you for being back with me today. Good morning, Jen. Now, Pleasure. Ev every time, Joyce, when I look up the story about Jennifer's death, it is just so, so powerful, and it really was a high-profile case. So, Joyce, you had to have been bombarded by reporters immediately. Well, I was there, and um, she had two apartments, and... Um, because we were trying to get her to change her lifestyle and she had been estranged from us for seven years so I hadn't had any contact with her but in another story I can tell you how that occurred mm -hmm. um, which is very strange but um, we did become reconnected two years before she actually died and um, we had gotten another apartment and she was living there I was in that apartment the guests that were supposed to have been in that apartment were in her old apartment and that is, I really should have been in that old apartment and they should have been in the other. Mm -hmm. It's like my number wasn't up. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the plan. <laughs> there wasn't, somehow it wasn't the plan. Um, but um, she, I was there in her apartment and um, I got a call from someone who was trying to get to her her apartment and that something was happening and um, and then I tried to reach her and then I I tried he told me to apparently he stopped and went somewhere anyway they shut down um, 7th Avenue and they shut down the subways and they cordoned off the entire block and um, so then they had the TV stations there and all the newspapers were there. So um, I, I started watching television and when I saw her body come out on ABC, but I couldn't get anyone in my family to believe it. No one would believe that this was actually happening, um, including my ex-husband. And um, so it was, it was difficult and I couldn't find out what hospital she was in because she was unidentified because it was in her apartment and the only person, but my daughter, Amy, the middle daughter, I worked for the New York Times and she got through to the reporter that was on the street at the Carnegie Deli and he knew which person had gone, um, been taken to what hospital and she had been going to Cornell Medical Center. I had called every hospital trying to find which one she was at by using her name and she was not, we have no oh one goodness, with that name Joyce. here. So by the time what happened was that Amy found out it was the Cornell Medical Center and went there first. And um, she was pretty badly disfigured, I, I assume. I, I don't know because my daughter would not let me see the body. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, you were anyway, I got there. I got there afterward. You know, mm -hmm. after my daughter had had seen her, and so I never really got a chance to say goodbye, which I think is not probably. Uh, not I don't. In retrospect, I should have done it anyway. You know, I I should have insisted, but I didn't have much control. Mm -hmm. I I then of 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 anything. People mm -hmm. like just kind of told me what to do. But the interesting thing is that when I was in her apartment, I was desperately trying to find where she was, you know, calling and calling, da da da, and call, calling to Amy, and who I finally believed me and got to a reporter, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm standing, I can remember, in the kitchen of her apartment, and she like passed through me. It was like, and I was like, oh, she's gone. 
and that's when she died. Wow, Joyce. I, yeah, I could feel, I, I, I can't exactly ex tell you exactly what, um, but I, I felt totally at peace then. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't, not at peace, but like, I, I, there's no point rushing around now and trying mm -hmm. to find her because she's mm -hmm. already gone. So then that was when you knew. And what a way to find out all of this. Number one, to have your daughter murdered and then to find, you know, find it out through reporters, find it out through television. That's yeah. horrible. And now, Joyce, let's mm. talk about, you know, how were you able to, to get through this, Joyce? Well, there was, first of all, the, the New York City police put every policeman in in t all the precincts on it, there were 18 homicide detectives on this case because nothing had happened in New York City for a long, long time. This was right, right before 9-11. It was May. It was like the beginning. Mm -hmm. I always feel it was like the beginning of the end, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, But uh, they were afraid. First of all, they didn't know who these people were. And, and I was in Jennifer's apartment, and I'm... I immediately I left and went to stay at my other daughter's apartment who lived in New York City. And they were afraid that I'd go back. So at three in the morning, they came to my other daughter's apartment and dragged me out of that apartment and over there. So because they were afraid that I had medicines or had something in that apartment that mm -hmm. that um, that I'd go back for. And they were afraid that they might go there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, go, I went back with the policeman and got my things, and then I, and then I, um, I went back to the apartment. And, um, and I, obviously I didn't sleep that night, that entire night. But um, I had been, I had found someone just recently, I went through like 13 tries to find a therapist because I had also just been divorced after 40 years. And I finally found one who I had known years before who was just a massage, a masseuse, mm -hmm. and who like uh, had everyone telling him their, their problems when he was <laughs> massaging them. So he decided to become a therapist. Okay. And so he did, and he was really excellent. And I called him in the middle of the night, and he like, sort of kept me together mm -hmm. until I could, yeah, you know, could, could I, until I could adjust to some kind of the, of the idea. Right. Now, Joyce, we're going to take a quick break mm -hmm. right now, but we'll talk more about this when we return from these messages, so please stay with us.